One of the biggest question marks about the Pixel 6 series is how its debut Google Tensor chip will perform compared to phones powered by Snapdragon processors. And thanks to newly shared benchmarks, we kind of have a better idea of how the Pixel 6 Pro will perform compared to the Pixel 5 and even the Galaxy S21 series. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Despite being formally announced, there is still a lot we don't actually know about the Google Pixel Tensor chipset, including the actual processor's cores used and its overall design. Though these details have finally kind of leaked, it's left us all a little bit more confused about whether the Pixel 6 series though will outperform its competition in the Android space. So going over all the details, firstly, a listing for a Pixel 6 Pro appeared on Geekbench, which as all tech nerds watching this will know, is a common tool for benchmarking computers and smartphones that share many of the aspects and specs of the device. While this may seem like a gold mine, and for a time it actually was, it didn't actually take long for people to begin crafting fake devices, uploading the results, and then watching as outlets and media online and YouTubers and whatnot would refer to them as leaks. Um, this is even proven out by another Geekbench listing for the Pixel 6 Pro, which was posted shortly after the original one that we've seen and appears to have a Qualcomm processor, which is an obvious contradiction and forgery because of how easy it can be to fake these listings, though one has to be taken with a grain of salt. That said, the folks over at XDA developers claim that one of their sources have a real Pixel 6 Pro model in the hand, and this source has reportedly been able to corroborate some of the details about the more plausible Geekbench listing that has been shared online, along with many other Pixel 6 tidbits, including a few details about that Google Tensor processor, which is set to debut in the devices. The crucial details about the Google Tensor chip, as XDA's source has supported, are the arrangement of the processor cores, as well as their frequencies, which together are enough to kind of puzzle out the full design of the Tensor chip itself. Now for some proper chipset nerdiness though. Well, for years, most ARM processors in smartphones have conformed to what is called a big little design that used a cluster of more powerful or big cores for demanding apps and games, while a cluster of power efficient or little cores handles the rest of your phone's needs. This has offered a pretty strong balance between being capable of high performance at a moment's notice and providing good battery life for the rest of the time. More recently though, chip designers have taken to adding a third cluster to the mix. Both Samsung and Qualcomm have opted to use what we'll call a 1 plus 3 plus 4 design, meaning a cluster with one very high powered core, another with three medium or large cores, and a third with four low power cores. The Snapdragon 888, for example, which is commonly used in a lot of high-end Android phones, uses a single Cortex-X1 core for its high power cluster. Meanwhile, if the corroborated Geekbench listing can be believed, the Pixel 6's Google Tensor chip shifts things toward more high power activities with a 2 plus 2 plus 4 configuration, specifically the frequencies used as well as the hidden details from this Geekbench listing point to two Cortex-X1 cores, two slightly older Cortex-A76 cores in the middle slot and four Cortex-A55 cores for the low end. In all regards, the Cortex-A76 though is a significant step down, which is being two generations out of date, which means the Google Tensor chips or its performance prowess may be a little more questionable than it was initially first predicted. At the very least, the comparisons to the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100 are less direct. And in fact, Google Tensor could very well be slower than those chips in some regards, but not all. So back to the benchmarks then. Well, currently the only other indicator we've had is a lone benchmark test from Geekbench, which for whatever reason, saw the Pixel 6 Pro score significantly lower than the OnePlus 9, which is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip. XDA's Michel Rahman also cited a source who claims to have that Pixel 6 Pro in hand, and he's shared details on Twitter and some more results of the benchmarking tools which run the upcoming Tensor powered foam. The tools, Speedometer and Jetstream 2, both from BrowserBench use various things like web, JavaScript and WebAssembly methods to push a device to its limits and then measure the performance. While far from a meaningful representation of real world speeds, these scores do help give an idea of how the Pixel 6 series may compare to other Android devices already available on the market. 
So for the speedometer test, which simulates and adding and removing items from a simple to-do list app, and it's rewritten using a variety of different frameworks and APIs, we find that the Pixel 6 Pro comes in close behind the Galaxy S21 Ultra and the Asus Zenfone 8, which are both Snapdragon 888 powered phones. Meanwhile, in a battle of Pixel versus previous Pixel, the Pixel 6 Pro and the Google Tensor massively outperform the Pixel 5 and its Snapdragon 765G processor. Next in the Jetstream benchmark, which runs many suites of smaller JavaScript and WebAssembly benchmarks, the Pixel 6 Pro once again comes in not too far behind the Galaxy S21 Ultra and the Zenfone 8. For whatever reason, the Pixel 5 handles the test a bit better here, making for a less problematic or performance gap between last year's phone and the Pixel 6 Pro. While it's going to be certainly disappointing to see the much anticipated Pixel 6 Pro powered by the long rumoured Google Made Chips fork behind in performance, it is important to remember that these tests were run on a pre-release device. There's still time for Google to include more last minute optimizations for the new Tensor chip, and these particular tests are not also necessarily derivative or definitive either, as they're relatively limited by what's possible in the web browser today, rather than using a native on-device benchmarking app. Beyond that, it's been clear from the outset that Google has put more emphasis on machine learning performance rather than raw specifications, which wouldn't be accounted for in these sorts of benchmark tests anyway. At the very least, it's clear that the Pixel 6 series is going to offer a significant upgrade for owners of the Pixel 5, but at the same time, it's still a little too early to properly tell without being able to test this for ourselves. There's also real world performance to consider, as nobody really sits and runs benchmarking tools constantly on their device, and they can often be a bit of a misnomer when it comes to the actual day-to-day -day performance or experience you're going to have with a smartphone. Spec nerds will naturally be disappointed by this new information, but we're going to ask you, what do you think? Do you think it matters? Is this first generation chip going to be a bit disappointed to begin with? But maybe in future we might see Tensor 2 provide massive jumps in performance for future Pixel hardware. Drop your comments down below. Until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.